Jake, this is Joel. It's sure good to see you yesterday, as always. And uh, there are these swings from yesterday. And again, like you said, these were pretty good ball flights. You hadn't been hit it that great. But these things really, like we talked about yesterday, man, like you, I've always told you, the path of this club head on the downswing for the better players does not change. And again, that's good news. You got some pretty good ball flights there yesterday, and that's largely because that got on the plane line. Now it'd be more consistent if it was on the plane line earlier, and that you were not going left right after impact there. That's how your swing is kind of different than most people's, is it goes fairly close to the plane line, but then it goes real left here, and that, as I explained to you, that's going to tend to make it hard to have a consistent draw or a consistent fade either way. And then this face-on angle, again, like you said, is you ask, is that some kind of a saving move? And yeah, you know, I kind of see this type of move among better players who are more field players, where these they kind of have these little, you know, lunges or lurches or whatever, because they can hit good shots with it. But it's quite often because they're doing some other unconventional things, right, in other parts of their swing that necessitates the kind of funny lurch or lur lunge or whatever. So there are some players whose heads kind of move down and move around, not as much as yours quite as much. Some tour players. I'll show you one here. This is uh, Rich Beam. Look how much his head moves back away towards his heels through impact. So that's one. Let me show you another one here. Uh, this would be Jill McGill, one of the ladies tour players. Watch how her head, right, how much it goes down there from where she started at a dress. All right, so there's her head up there. And an impact, right, down here. Now part of that is that the camera moved. See, the camera actually moved up after she started her swing. You can see that the blue line, see is where she's starting, and the blue line is on the rope line there on the ground. And then when you get to impact, see the red line now is on the rope line on the ground, so that's how much that camera moved. You see what I mean, during her swing? So the camera moved up a lot by the time she got back to impact. But... Another way you can cite this is right here at impact, see here at the top of her head, it's kind of on the bottom of that roof structure out there in the distance at impact. Well, when she started, sure enough, it was way up there at the top of that roof structure out there in the distance. So there are some players, you know, tour players whose heads go down that much and stuff. And you see, guess what? Look at her shaft at impact. You see how it's low for her, too. All right, because again, you all get closer to it, you need to scrunch your arms in so you don't hit eight miles fat each time. So that's actually kind of a good example for you there, isn't it? So, but again, they're, they're not going to be any real good tour players whose heads go down that much. Tiger, in fact, in fact, yeah, let me show you one. Tiger used to have that head go down more. Um, let's see if I can find that one for you. But over his career the last 20 years or so, his head has gone down less than it used to. Yeah, watch this one. There's his head at a dress. In an impact, look how much it went down. This is 1997. So again, but it's still not going down as much as yours. Whereas with an iron, he would uh, 
tend to not have it go down as much. But it still went down. This is a long time ago also. So again, it's not totally out of the question, you know, but yours is more than theirs as a rule. But again, the way to get back, I think, to, to get more consistent with this in the long run, Jake, like you want to do, man, is to kind of work back from impact like you did yesterday. I gave you that drill again to help you learn the feel of difference for yourself and to be able to monitor it on your own with that little drill I gave you again yesterday. To be able to hit shots, hold your finish, little half swings to really learn what it's like through impact to have that club head going in a much more conventional kind of a path. Thanks so much, man. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Hi, this is Joel. I'm here at Dr. Todd Elworth's office. He's one of the best chiropractors in the region. He's a TPI certified golf fitness professional. And I really want you to know about him because he can help you a lot with your golf fitness, just as he's helped my young student Taylor here in the last year or so. Now, how we met, Taylor came into my office with back pain. We basically, what we took him through is a numerous screens to find out why he had the back pain. I don't only treat back pain, but my, my second goal is to find out exactly why he has this problem. So we analyzed him, we find out we had some certain weaknesses, we put him on some strengthening exercises, and he's doing very well. He's done great. He's had very little back pain, and that's mainly because he injured himself working too hard at the golf course. So he's done his exercises, he's felt great. I'm very, very thankful that Todd's been able to help Taylor in this great way. And I want him to help you too if you have any questions at all about your golf fitness. Thank you. Thank you. This is Joel Suggs. I sure enjoyed meeting you down at the Cincinnati Golf Show this weekend and showing you your swing on the 2D equipment that I have. And so I want to take about two or three minutes to just show you around Meadowlink. This is the studio I use in the winter for all my students. You see there's a down the line camera angle for our 2D equipment. And then we have a face on camera angle also. And then what we also have here is 3D equipment to where I can show you your swing from six different camera angles with this 3D equipment and we can get your swing from down to the 1 20th of a, 1 120th of a second in terms of exactly what your hips, shoulders, and hands are doing in the swing. And then also, we, I have the most realistic hitting curve I've ever seen from cutterz.com. So when you hit your full shot, it feels as realistic as possible. And then I have three different green speeds for you to practice your putting. 9.5 on the centimeter, 10.5 on the centimeter, and 12.5 on the centimeter. That's benefited my students tremendously. And then also I have a lot of learning aids like this smart stick. You can see the rest of those learning aids over here in my bag that we can work on to help you learn the certain fields and the golf swing that you and I both want. And then also I help my students a lot with their equipment through the winter. This is a frequency analyzer where we twang your club and it gives us a reading here. And then also we plot your whole set each club on this, these lines to see if the set is really matched or not. Quite often they aren't, and it helps my students tremendously when they find out what clubs are the offending clubs. And then if we get tired of being indoors and we want to go outdoors and get some, we can do that. It's my daughter. Ellie, good to see you. I haven't seen her in weeks. <laughs> no wonder you've been gone, Ellie. You've been out here playing in the snow all this time. But this is our natural turf area. This is closed until April, as you can see, uh, but it's a fantastic area where we can step outside and hit some balls and get some real ball flight. Or, if you get pretty satisfied and think you're looking better on the video here, you're kind of cooped up inside and want to go outside, we can step on out and hit balls and see real ball flight for about five or 10 or 15 minutes, however long you and I can stand the cold, out into the air, and we see them land at these different flags. I have a yardage book for this driving range. It's the first one I've ever seen in my life where we know exactly what it is with the front, back, and middle of each screen. And again, the covered area here is heated. So we stay out there for about 5, 10, 15 minutes, like I said. It enables us to see some ball flight. And then we get satisfied that things are looking the way we want. And we come back inside, take off our coat, and look again at the video equipment to see how your swing's looking to make sure that you understand it. And then notice too, my exercise ball up top here. And then also, so I help my students a lot with their fitness through the winter. And then I will help you also 
with your sports psychology, with your golf psychology from the golfpsych.com people down in Texas. That's helped my students tremendously a lot over the years too. So again, I sure enjoyed meeting you down at the Cincinnati Golf Show this weekend. I look forward to seeing you again out here this summer at Meadowlinks or even right now in the winter. I have a lot of people that work on their games with me right through the winter. Check out more information about the things I do to help you at joelsuds.com. Take care.